Hello, Durban Christian Center South, and a warm welcome to all our viewers. We're so glad that you're now joining us on the electronic altar. Is that the new thing that's going around? So we're glad that you could worship with us, and our pastors are so glad that you could be with us. We greet you on behalf of our lead pastors, Apostle Johnny and Patricia Grobler. And we'd love for you to come and join us when you do have time. You can find us at the Bluff Eco Park, I think. It's 55 Grays in Park, and so if you haven't come down, please make sure that you get in that car. You yep. take a lovely drive down because we are waiting to welcome you yeah. Sunny, sunny Durban. That's where it, it's all happening. Come and be a part of it as we worship God. Listen, if you're not on the family WhatsApp group, what happened? So get connected. Get connected. 081-563-6960. And you can get all the information that's happening right here at our church. Because you know, we, we don't want them to have FOMO, like fear of missing out. Oh, uh, we yes. We plugged don't. in. <laughs> and at all these events that plugged we Plugged in and charged up. up. Come on. Yeah, so... Listen, we are talking about the goodness of God. And we're speaking about the resurrection that yeah. happened. You know, that's two weeks ago, we celebrated Good Friday, Easter Sunday. And I was just thinking, you know, what was, why was it necessary for God after the resurrection to yeah. still show himself to people? Why was it necessary? And people would consider, you know, he's almighty, he's all powerful. He didn't have to come and show, you know, people like Thomas who yeah. didn't believe. Doubting. And doubting Thomas, that's what he was called. And the disciples and the people that's walking on the road to Emmaus. And he shows himself there. And for me personally, I think that it's victory yeah. over death. Come on. Victory over sin. And over sin, yeah. Yes, victory over things that we go through. And when God resurrected, it wasn't just um, a reincarnation. It was transformation, you know, from earthly into heavenly. Yeah. And then when he places himself in our lives, that's what happens to us. Come on. We, we get, get changed. We get given new life. Exactly. We are transformed. You know, and talking about new life, Revelation 21, 5 says he makes all things new. New. There Come we on. go. So and he is making all things new. Exactly. Come on. You know, Powerful. and when we talk about the resurrection prior to that is that we go through challenges in life. Yeah. But once God takes over, those things all become old. And he says, I created me. A clean heart, new spirit. Come on. Right? And, and he makes all things new. He like makes you all said. things new. And all we got to do is just bask in the goodness of yes, God. Yes. And I love that because, yeah. you know, we move from victim to victor. Correct. And that's, that's just it. because of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Of sickness, Amen. death, yeah. sin, victorious. That's it. We are victorious in God. So come and be part of our family yeah. because it's where miracles happen right here at DCC South. Amen. Amen. So we got a busy, busy calendar. We're already in Jam autumn. Backs. We're already in autumn. Yeah. yeah. So things are happening. I know there's a, uh, we've had a guest speaker last week, Pastor Dave Phillips. And if you missed out. And he was filled with new life. <laughs> he come was on. filled with new life at 80 years old and he's dancing on the stage. If you missed it, get onto our YouTube channel, DCC South. Go and watch last week's message. Yeah. Absolutely inspirational. You, yeah, you'll be um, filled with the joy of the Lord as well. As well. I mean, he's speaking about faith in God and what God can do for you. And he's 80 years old. 80 years old. Ex-Wimbledon player, but so amazing, so blessed so in tune with God. So yeah, and this week uh, we've got Pastor, oh sorry, Prophet Richard, Prophet Gray, Richard Gray that's going to be wife. speaking. Yeah, they're joining us this morning. They're going to be speaking. We don't want you to miss out. Create a watch party, invite friends and family. Yeah. Let's know what's happening. I think also we've had men's encounter. Now we've got women's encounter coming up. Yes, yeah, so we've got an awesome women's encounter coming up and that is going to be on the uh, I think it's the 20th. 20th. Yeah, yes, yeah. on the 20th, 20th of April. Of April. And this is just such a wonderful time for all of our ladies. Even if you have been, if you haven't been, this is an, an encounter where you really just get to meet with the voice of God because we have an amazing panel of lecturers and they share God's word and it is God's word that transforms us. Yeah. And so it's a wonderful time where the ladies can get together. Ladies only, eh? Yes, ladies, ladies only. only. Strictly, it is women's <laughs> encounter. I know yeah. the men here, the men part and the women, but <laughs> right. this one is for the ladies. Right. And so it's just a wonderful time where you get to be immersed in God's presence and transformed. And so you want to... Um, Go on our Facebook page. You want to check on the details and bring your notebook, 
bring your gal pals along and just come and be saturated and transformed. Ladies Day Out. Yes, yeah. come on. <laughs> Ladies Day the Out. The Women's Day before <laughs> Women's Day. <laughs> it's happening at all our campuses. Yes. Right, so that's Finland's Bluff and at uh, Wentworth. Registration starts at 7.30, is yes, it? Yes, that's correct. 7.30. So, yeah, bring a page and a pen, make notes so that you're part of it. Also, we've got an interesting thing coming up called the Wild Seminar happening on the 4th of May. That's Apostle Johnny Krobler and Justin Krobler that's going to be sharing some interesting the facts. Duo. Yeah, the Jam Fact. That's Father and Son, double, if you didn't double know. Love. Double, double. You're <laughs> going to be blessed in terms of Wild Seminar. How to create a mindset of thinking about wealth. Yeah. You know, we're always just thinking about God and spirit, but we put it all together and yeah. God blesses it. Yeah. Listen, if you and listen. He wants us to be in good health and wealth. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Health and wealth. That's what God wants from you. And so you've got to place yourself in God's hands yeah. in order for that to happen. We're going to be listening to Prophet Gray as he brings the word of God. As we always say, be kind, be happy, be praying. God bless you and have an amazing Sunday. God bless. Hello, Derby Christian. Holy Spirit, sweet and gentle counselor, breath of God, we seek your presence. What we have is
thank you wonderful spirit of God that you raised us you quickened us you brought us into the presence of the almighty you caused your church to stand in the holy place hallelujah around the throne of the living God and to, the, today our God we thank for anointing our eyes filling our hearts with your glory causing us to see the king of glory the one who Isaiah saw high and lifted up and your throne fills the temple your robe all around and your glorious holy face we honor you our God we thank you this morning Lord you brought us to the holy of holies hallelujah to stand in the glory of the holy place hallelujah 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 that we might know you and be partakers of heavenly God we thank you Lord that this place is so rich this place is so glorious. This place is so full of revelation and power and might. We thank you for your life-giving spirit. We thank for all that you have prepared for those who love you. And this morning, Lord, we can come and we can eat. We can drink and we can be satisfied and we can be filled with all because all is ours. Come on, just lift your hands and honor him for a moment. Bask in his glory and receive of the Holy Ghost. The things prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we honor you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you called us into the glory of your holy presence. We're not like the religious who stand outside in rituals and types and shadows. But we're the ones, my God, who've received the very inheritance of our God to stand in your glory, stand in your presence. And this morning, O oh Spirit of the living God, we thank you that you work in each and every one. You are the yes. You are the amen. Thank you, Spirit of God. Oh, there's a wind of the Spirit that just moved in the place. The glory of the Father manifests. Hallelujah. He knows what his children has need of. The bread of life. The glory of God. And we honor you, Spirit of God. Blessed be your holy name. This morning, Lord, as we stand in your presence, we declare that you're all and all. Hallelujah. And we thank you this morning that we've already received from you Alpha and Omega, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Oh Lord, be glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank for anointing every eye to see, every ear to hear every heart to perceive and this morning Lord we thank you that the things of our God that are spiritually discerned is made manifest in this house we give you the glory we give you the praise as we yield to your will in Jesus holy name hallelujah 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 Shabra, come on, come on. Can you just pray in other, in other tongues for a few moments? Commune in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
this morning his perfect will shall be done in you hallelujah it's your spirit that catches what the holy ghost is doing the bible says the things of the spirit are spiritually discerned his thoughts are higher than our thoughts greater than our thoughts and this morning by spirit he's going he's moving you Hallelujah to the revelation of his glory. We thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Well, praise God, you may be seated. It's wonderful to be in the presence of God. It's wonderful to stand in the holy place. And uh, I'm just so grateful to God today that I'm here with my French chick. Hallelujah. With my sweet girlfriend. Amen, amen, amen. She, she's a French chicken. I took her to Paris <laughs> for anniversary. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. We've been married for the 38 years. And what? Amen, amen. And uh, she testifies that I get better every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, it's such a, it's such a blessing to have... For me, it's such a blessing. And when I'm looking back now, such a blessing that I've picked the man that is for me. Amen? Amen. And, and you know what? Amen. And there's no marriage that's got no problem. Hello? Amen. Come on, let's be real here, okay? Amen. But you know what? We worked at it. Amen. Today, we can still look at each other's eyes and go mad. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? And, and, and I want to... I, stu I stood under the Eiffel Tower and I spoke all the French language. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the God that we serve. And you know, we truly thank God because the, the God we serve was in the center of our marriage. You won't make it if you don't allow God to be the center of your marriage because you become independent, yeah. that you don't need each other. Meantime, the way God created marriage, yet we are one is one is like this, the other one's like that, but together we are one. We need each other. And you know, I've got strength. You know, I've got the French fire. Don't play with me. I'll take you out. And this one's got the softness, but then sometimes also the hardness. And don't, don't misunderstand well, the me. The softness, but then if you put it too hard, then the burama comes <laughs> the in. The burama comes <laughs> But the wonderful thing is we've learned to understand Hallelujah. and to respect each other. And it's a supernatural one. It's supernatural. The Bible says when, when you join together, he steps in. He knits your soul. Souls. And the two become one. one. Hallelujah. And you begin in the spirit. Come on, can you lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We begin in we the begin spirit. We begin in the spirit. And then the Galatians you, says Lord. we don't complete it in the flesh. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, the world tells you, you know, if you can go to Paris, then you're going to be in love. Don't believe no, don't, it. No. There are many cats and dogs don't. in Paris. <laughs> Amen. It's about the Spirit, Spirit. of God knitting your soul. Amen. The Spirit Amen. of God making you humble. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God leading you to repent. Repentant, yes. Amen. Amen. Leading you to forgive. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. Any person that's been married for more than one week, Knows there's power in forgiveness. forgiveness. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And, and those are the times when it's the sweetest. Yes, when because when we re, when we refired again, because we had to repented forgive you, and, and, and said I'm sorry, sorry, and eventually we let go of our pride. That's right. That's so important. Amen. Amen. And then you you have the most sweetest time together. Amen. Again. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible speaks See. of you honoring the wife. Who's the wife of your youth? And you know, Hallelujah. that's one thing. When I got saved and I realized, because I come from a, b a very broken background, didn't have a father image. But one thing, when I got saved and I decided, you know what, that in our marriage, we both spoke about it very, very clearly. We spoke two words that we were not allowed to say it. Divorce was never allowed to say in my family. We were not going to say those words. Because that brings that spirit in the house. Amen. So we, it's we, never an option. It's not an option. That is not a, a, a door. What Nelly used to always say? Um, divorce, never. never. Murder, the, a thousand, thousand times. <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 And also, to go to bed, 
to go to bed without forgiving each other. Because what happens then, when you're sleeping, the devil is adding more stories and you come back, you, you were dealing with one thing. But when you wake up the next morning, you're dealing with so many things because the now enemy the devil has slept. Was busy all night he was sleeping with you the whole cows. night telling you all kinds of nonsense, how bad your husband is, how cruel he is, how this and that and that. And meantime, that's why, I mean, I remember, I'm quickly going to say that. I remember we actually uh, kicked each other off the bed. I holy, kicked him off the kicks. bed and he took the, the blanket off me. So we both did it. He took the blanket off. No, because well, I didn't we, want to repent. We, we had a covenant. We will not go to sleep angry. Angry. We will sort it, it out. out. And, and today, then you know what happens sometimes? They say, no, that's her problem. She's being silly. I'm going to sleep. And then you think you're going to sleep. And just you think you're going to sleep, you feel this foot <laughs> kicking off the bed. So you're going to talk to me. Gonna Amen. <laughs> And uh, so I said, do I kick her off? No, I'll just pull the blankets off her because just now, you know. That's a better manner. <laughs> and, but, but that's but, what we did. Yeah, and today we're standing here 38 Amen. years because we did what the Bible say. God Amen. bless you. Love you guys. Hallelujah. Well, it's glorious to be back home. We, we really thank God. And I was standing here worshiping with the church today and thinking this is the best church in the whole wide world. Amen. And... Um, if other people got a problem with it, stay in your church. It's okay. This is the best church in the world. <laughs> but uh, praise God. I want you to take your Bibles with me this morning. Uh, today's a very special day because we have the prophet of God in our presence. Hallelujah. And uh, I thank God for this man, Prophet Richard Gray, hand chosen of the Lord. And uh, we're really privileged that he's with us today. And I want you to just turn with me in your Bible to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18 as we prepare with our offerings this morning. Matthew 28 and verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. This is the commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go into all the world and make disciples. Hallelujah. That is the power of a church. Because a church is equipped to make disciples. It's a divine equipping. You know, there are people who run around with their own ministry and a great evangelist running around the world, and it's wonderful. They're making converts. But Jesus commands us, go and make disciples. To be saved means to become a disciple of Jesus. Are you with me? When Jesus spoke to, his, uh, spoke to those whom he called, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. So when we step into this glorious kingdom of God, we become partakers of the kingdom. We become those who strengthen the kingdom. And let me just say this but on the side here, that the enemy will do everything to not build a church, to pull people out of the church, because the church is designed to disciple you. In any ministry, you have a ministry. But when you're in the church, you have the fivefold ministry. And God's given the fivefold ministry to equip the saints. Amen. And that is in the church. And it's in the church where you love. It's in the church where you're known. It's in the church where you're ministered to. Amen. It's in the church where you are loved, where you are followed through, where there are mature believers that can love you. Amen. Some people, you know, only their mothers can love them. <laughs> Amen. And most times, not because of anything, it's because they they like, uh, what's it, um, porcupines. <laughs> difficult. Amen. But then God's given those in the church who can love difficult people. Yeah. Hallelujah. And love you right out of your dif difficulty. And bring you into softness. Aren't you glad that God made you soft? Amen. How many of you, uh, uh, especially I'm talking to the men now, 
You never cried in your life. Men don't cry. But when you got saved, you just saved for a little while and you're shocked. There you are crying. Amen. You see a situation. Wow, because God causes his love, his softness, his grace to empty. And, you know, when we, when we come together, it's us together that makes the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. There's no kingdom without the church. Hallelujah. And so in church, we make disciples. And this discipling uh, happens right through the week. It happens with our relationships here. It happens with the elders and the deacons and people ministering to one another, people stepping into their gifting, people stepping into their calling, people starting serving. Hallelujah. And, and in this church, we want to be great. Can I tell you how you can be great in this church? Very easy. When you walk outside, pick up a piece of paper. Amen. Just become a servant. And that's the way that God leads you. Come on, lift your hand and say, by serving, I enter greatness. Hallelujah. And, you know, it's so, so often people think, I must become the great one. No, by serving. And so, uh, I just want to get to the bottom. Jesus said, make disciples. How do we make disciples? We do everything for that. Amen. And so we encourage each and every one of you. You need to be discipled. Hallelujah. Don't believe the world that you can be on your own. Pastor Fred used to have this saying. It says, the banana that leaves the bunch gets peeled. Amen. Don't get peeled. Get discipled. And that takes finance. Amen. Uh, we, we had recently, we had to change the structure of our discipleship because of finance. Because um, we, used to, we used to have Bible College and School of the Spirit, all that on Wednesday nights. And every Wednesday night, we had to run a generator because of load shedding. And uh, so then, but we were handling it. And then uh, Finland came onto a load, load shedding schedule. And suddenly, we had to buy another generator. And we had to, you know, think of all the fuel that that's going to take. So, so we're talking about it. And... Uh, some of our pastors said, Pastor Johnny, this is crazy. Let's just change the evening. So instead of spending all that money on diesel and generators and all that on Wednesday night, we shifted into a Tuesday night. Amen. And so Wednesday night, we, we declare Wednesday night wedding enrichment seminar night. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Buy a candle with your loved one. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, but you know what? It's finance. It's finance is very important. You can, you, can, you can sing like the angel Gabriel, but without money, you're not going to reach out. And so I just want to thank God that in this church, we are making disciples. In this church, every cent you sow, every cent you give is extended for the kingdom. Hallelujah. And we, we recently, we had our, our production. And it was a three-night production. And I want you to know you invested good seed. Hallelujah. You invested good seed. I want to thank God for each and every one of you. We are under a divine commission to invest in the kingdom. And many of you invested in that. And we invested and we had those three nights. It's not, it's not cheap. But you sowed into it. And you know what? There's a reward that comes with that. Can I tell you what the reward is? 147 salvations. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is a good return on your investment. Can I say it again? That is a good return on your investment. You know, the, 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 the immature will say, oh, well, I put, I put, 100, uh, I put 100 rand in. I put 50,000 in. And where's my return? Uh, you, you're not seeing the return. Jesus said, one soul is more, worth more than all the silver, all the gold. It is a rich investment. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, souls are a rich investment. And so I bless you today. And in Jesus' name, I, I commission you once again to go into the marketplace and, and take the finances. Hallelujah. I, in the name of Jesus, I ordain you to go into this world and, and effect a wealth transfer 
out of the hands of the wicked into the hands of the just. Hallelujah. Do good business. Do supernatural trades. Hallelujah. Let the anointing of God rest mightily on you to take new, new territory. Hallelujah. And expand your business. Amen. Until the wealth of the wicked. Somebody say amen. amen. Until the finances are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Because God loves souls. And so I bless you today in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank for each and every one as they sow seeds. We're investing in your mighty kingdom. We are under a divine mandate this day to go and take the wealth and bring it into the kingdom and establish our households, Lord, in faith. I bless every home. I bless every saint. I bless this offering today. We thank you for your hand on your servants to prosper them, to increase them, to open doors before them. Hallelujah. To give them wisdom and divine insight, favor. Hallelujah. And open doors. I bless them. We thank you, Father, for the increase, for your saints that prospers. I command a word of prosperity in this house for the extension of your kingdom. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. God bless you as you give. Hello, DCC South family. We thank God for you who continue to give cheerfully and purposefully to the kingdom of God. We have many ways for you to give your tithe and sow your faith seed. You may give your tithes and offering in person by placing it in the offering bag, using our card machines at the info counter, giving via EFT or use Zappa. The banking details and QR code is available on the offering envelope. May your seed produce a supernatural harvest of favor and blessings. Hello, DCC family. On the 20th of April, we are looking forward to our First Lady's God Encounter for 2024. Encounters give us an opportunity to separate ourselves and come into intimate communion with God as we take time to examine our hearts and lives in His holy and loving presence. Registration starts at 7.30. Remember to prepare for note-taking and pre-order lunch from the provider using the menu on WhatsApp. Alternatively, you can bring a packed lunch. In order for us to best prepare for you, join using the link sent on WhatsApp. Please note that the advertised marriage retreat did not receive the desired support and has been cancelled. Deposits that were paid will be refunded. A remember to Dara's the 4th of May for a wealth seminar with Apostle Johnny and Justin Krobler. More details to follow in the upcoming weeks. Join us for Life in the Spirit this evening with our special guests, Prophet Richard and Debbie Gray. See you at 5 p.m. Well, praise the wonderful name of Jesus. We are truly blessed today, and I thank God for Prophet Richard Gray that's with us today, and he's with us tonight as well. Hallelujah. So bring as many people as you can. Bring those who need a word from God. Bring those who need a touch from God, because they're going to be mightily touched. Now, I was thinking about Today, when I introduce you, Prophet Richard Gray, and I was thinking of the words internationally traveled, greatly used of God, speaks in a, you know, a, a highly desired uh, minister of the gospel and all that. And then the Holy Ghost checked me and said, he's a precious man of God. That's his credentials. <laughs> he speaks from the heart of God. He speaks by the voice of the Spirit. And he speaks as an oracle of God. Hallelujah. And today we know that God's going to use him mightily. And I want you to open your hearts and thank God for him. He has got a wonderful church in Peter Marisburg, Peter Marisburg International Christian Center. I remember those early days when uh, I went up with Pastor Fred Roberts and we all came together. Prophet Richard, we had a big crusade there and established the church. And it's been absolutely wonderful See how the church has grown. God supernaturally gave them land um, that wasn't possible 
Do you know that they had to change the country's laws in order to accommodate what happened there? An incredible thing. Hallelujah. So that means for me there's no law to stand against you. There's nothing man can do to stop what God wants to do. Somebody say amen. Now I want us to put our hands together and thank God for this mighty prophet of God. And welcome prophet Richard Gray. Hey, it's always good to be here, I must say. Gosh, it's an awesome church. And uh, whoopsie daisy, here we go with it. I might just prophesy this pulpit right off the stage here. Stand with me. Just stand with me for a moment. I want to try something different. Where's Naughty and Nathan? Not Naughty Nathan. Naughty and Nathan. Where are they? Come up here as fast as possible. I want you to play the worship songs that you're playing, but I want you to play soft. I want you to play some lead. So I want you to lift the guitar a bit louder. I heard a sound when you guys were playing just now. And I just want to I want to go with that. Uh, start with that uh, Spirit Come, I think it is. Well, was there a Kim song that you sang earlier on? Kim song. Start with that one. Spirit Come. But I want you to do some lead on that thing. Loud. I want you to... One naughty bit down, and I want you louder for a change. This is, I've never done this before, but I heard a sound while you were worshiping. Don't be shy, Nathan. Hit those strings. Lead. Go for it. Naughty bit down. I want to hear this guy more, just, but I need you to just blend in. Come on, guys, just, uh, I'm going to prophesy now. That, that's kind of what, what I'm setting up for. I don't need this music, but I, I felt the Lord wanted this sound. Can you go louder at all? Can you go louder? not my son say that he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it do you think I was playing games says the Lord when I began to create and when you look at the splendor the wonder and the majesty and the accuracy of my creation in every single phase in the plants the fish the seas the land the skies the trees even the mountains, even beneath the earth. Biologically, scientifically, look at the marvel of my creation, how majestic it is. And even the human mind cannot fathom some of the creation that I've done, says the Lord. But that is secondary to me, says the Lord. I created all that as a platform for you to stand on, says the Lord. Do you think I'm toying with you when I made you, says the Lord, each and every one of you? And yes, there are some of you that have entertained the lies of the enemy, the murderer, the liar, the father of lies. And the Lord says, I want to encourage you this day to say, I'm the glory and the lifter up of your head. forfeit you or forsake you never says the Lord you are the apple of my eye you are engraved upon the palms of my hands I have gathered you together as special jewels and treasure for my own oh how I love you says the Lord with an everlasting love I knew mankind would sin I knew you would fall says the Lord that's why I gave you the free will of choice. 
There are those of you who stand here today because of your choice, says the Lord. You chose well. Even as I said through my prophets of old, how long will you vacillate between two opinions? If the devil is the devil, then choose him. But if God is God, then choose him. But choose God because God is life. And you have chosen life. And that more abundantly, says the Lord. And I want to work a work in you, says the Lord. I want you to surrender even more, says the Lord. I want you to consider your value. Not the value in your eyes, but your value in my eyes. According to the written word, says the Lord. Dig into the scriptures and see how much I love you. For you only know me. Through the written word, you will not know me anymore. You cannot learn of me in the universities of the world. You cannot learn of me, says the Lord, in the business world. You cannot learn of me in government, in the schools, in the medical fraternity, on the sports fields. There are types and shadows, yes, only. But you learn of me through my word, says the Lord. My love letter to you. Daily, says the Lord, I'll load you with benefits. If you will open my word daily, says the Lord, I will speak to you. I will encourage you. I will lift you up. I will guide you and I will show you great and mighty things. Mm, I just want to say something that I saw as a revelation, never seen it before. I quoted from Jeremiah 33 verse 3, the word of the Lord through me. Call on me and I'll answer you. Hey, God says, call on him through the through reading the word. Wow. That's where you will see great and mighty things. Miracles of note. Miracles, wonders, and signs. God said, We in fact are signs. Children are for signs. That's us. What manner of love is this that we should be called children of God? you perceive your royalty and you perceive your value and you got to stop looking to your upbringing you got to stop looking to your past you got to stop looking to your physical looks stop looking to your social status your financial status look to what God looks at you you're the apple of his eye the focus of his attention, the target of his love, not now, but forever, everlasting life. Someone here is very desperate. You're almost suicidal. And right now, this word probably is just for you. I don't know. I've, uh, when I was down there, the Lord started speaking to me to prophesy this word. And I want you to know right now that God's wrapping his arms as were around you. Well, Jesus said, I gather you as a hen gathers her chicks. <laughs> Let him gather you today. I just sense that person is, God's touching you. You know who you are. You know your desperate situation. I rebuke a spirit of suicide against you. Lying devils of hell. Break it in the name and by the blood of Jesus. I don't know if you want to just come and stand here and we just pray and lay hands on you. You may be here and you know your life's not right with God. You know that you've got habits and maybe bondages and things that you just can't break let us lay hands on you there's an anointing the glory of God is here to set you free it's not man that's gonna it's not man that saves you it's not man that first loved you it's God who first loved you if you want to make right with the Lord just come and stand here Hey, we've all walked that road. My goodness, man. When I first came to the Lord Jesus, 
56 years ago, there on. <laughs> you know how many times I came forward, even for salvation, over and over and over? Because I want you to make absolutely sure. Thank you, Jesus. Church, just pray in the Spirit. Stretch your hands toward these precious children. Pastor John, if you can come and join me and we both just lay hands, I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. You know what I felt today? You know what I prayed today? I've never prayed this before, Pastor Johnny. But I said, Lord, love you. Love your people through me today. My wife is far more compassionate than what I am. I'm a bit of a, like, not a bully, but when it comes to the word of God, I seem to like come as a hammer. But today I just prayed that. I don't know, I've never prayed it before. I said, Lord, just please love your people through me today. And he has. Don't you know God loves you? Gosh, if only you could see how valuable you are. I quoted a few scriptures through the prophecy. The Lord just spoke a few through me. First, pray this after me, everyone. Those of you in front here, because I don't know all your condition, but we want to lay hands on you. But everybody in these and you in front just pray to say Father in Jesus name I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins I appreciate it and I receive you Jesus as my savior my deliverer my healer my provider my friend who sticks closer to me than my own family, who will never leave me nor forsake me. I receive forgiveness, deliverance, healing, and freedom through the shed blood of Jesus. Satan and demon powers, I renounce your works. I laugh at you actually. You are no match for the blood of Jesus. Today and forever, I overcome you by the shed blood of the stripes of Jesus. Of his tenfold shedding for me, I receive wholeness and forgiveness. Yes. I don't know. Sorry, I just had to stop there. Someone here really needs to receive forgiveness. You've allowed things to happen to you. You've done things in the past that you can't forgive yourself. But I want to know, don't usurp God's authority. You say, what? (laughs) Listen to this. If God forgives you, who are you to not forgive yourself? You're usurping his authority. So right now say this. I forgive myself because God's forgiven me. Father, if you've forgiven me, Who am I to not forgive myself? I I also forgive those that have offended me, those that betrayed me, those that owe me. But Lord, right now, all I owe them is love. I put my sword down. I will not fight anymore. I will, I will leave it in your hands for any retribution, but I receive my restoration. Yes, someone owes one of you big bucks here. Let you down financially. God says, I'll repay. If you trust me, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Someone was robbed financially. Maybe it even was an inheritance. Someone you had a loss of life.
God says, just, just receive His acceptance of your life. Pastor Johnny, let's just pray. Come on, receive our, receive our praise. God, in the name and by the blood of Jesus, take authority over devils and demons in this man's life. Every religious spirit, Father, that is bound him, every act of hatred against him, every blow and punch that was, was wielded against him, Father, and word, we break it in the name and by the blood of Jesus. Bind you, you devils of hell. Loose this man. Loose his family. The Lord says, my son, I've called you this day forward. I've called you into this house. I've called you because I've placed my hand upon you for good and not for evil. And I've called you and I will anoint you with the evangelistic anointing. And you will go into the highways and the byways and you will preach my word. And you will pray and cast out devils. You will even lay hands on the sick. But the Lord says, come in strong, says the Lord. And be disciple. Come under the hand of my man and woman of God. Come under and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And you shall see it. I'll exalt you. In, in, in your your mind in your spirit in your body even in your finances and I will even uh, anoint your hands these hands that you've clasped before me I will anoint them to make money says the Lord and you will prosper but as long as you submit to my obedience do you recognize him at all? Is this your first time or second time? You know him, so just look after him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we, we take authority over any adverse spirit, Lord, that's, that's trying to violate your daughter. We break every spirit of abuse against her in the name and by the blood of Jesus. We speak peace in the name and by, and by the shed blood of Jesus. Cleansing cleansing. Gosh, I see God cleansing you. You know what it's about. I just see a cleansing coming into your life. Mm. Words, actions. God's ridding you of everything. A cleansing, a refreshing peace like you've never experienced from this day on. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Father, we bless your daughter now. In the name and by the blood of Jesus. Oh God, she's gone through so much, Father. Struggled most of her life, God. The Lord says, my daughter, you've been faithful. You've been faithful. Don't worry about what you've sacrificed. Don't worry about the abuse that, that they've taken advantage of you. I've got your reward and it's an eternal reward. And you'll stand before me one day and you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant, which you are, says the Lord. But watch your mouth, says the Lord. Keep that mouth closed. Stop criticizing. Stop joining yourself with the criticizers for that's betrayal, says the Lord. And that's part of your downfall. The, the, the devil has uh, trapped you in a cycle of speaking against those that have hurt you. Just drop Drop it, drop it, says the Lord. Pray for them rather. Ah, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. How's it? What's your name? Misha. Yes, like, where's the Bendigo? <laughs> you catch up with us. Misha, I don't want to embarrass you. Father, I pray for Meshach. Gosh, I've never met somebody with the name Meshach before. My goodness. God, Father, you've got such plans for this man. I see business. I see wealth. Yeah, you've been robbed. I see, I think you're the one that's been robbed financially. But Meshach, the Lord says, if you could just get in and lock into God. Lock into God. Remember, Jesus, as the scripture says, is your first love. Always, always, always. Be like David of old, who always inquired of the Lord first. And then God gave him divine strategy. And then he succeeded. I think you need to know that you're, you're, you're quick on the draw. You're like a cowboy, you know. 
you, you like you remind me of me in my early stage. God would say, Richard, I want you to go. And I didn't hear where he wanted me to go. I just started running. You like that. You, you, you just charge. But God wants to channel that zeal. Channel. You've got to hear what and where he wants you to go. What he wants you to do. You're in the right place at the right time with this church. Just let me lead you. I've got to tell you that. I see you in leadership in this church. But I see wealth. Wealth. I see wealth. Right now you think, oh God. Of all the failures I've had, how can it be possible? But I'm telling you now, God can do miracles with anyone, anyhow. You just need His touch, you need His spirit. Just like you heard all the songs playing. Get into the spirit, get into the word, get into the fellowship, get into the discipleship process. And suddenly you'll see that popcorn, that breakthrough will come. It takes time. Some, we don't all have. A suddenly is a long time to come. People think it suddenly just happens. No. They had to wait. They had to wait in the upper room. Some couldn't handle it. Started off with 500, ended off with 120. Then the suddenly came. It's like getting scripture. You sow a seed, then the suddenly. The suddenly only happens at the fruit. From root to fruit, there's a, there's a process. But the suddenly always comes if you stay in there. And I see God giving you a suddenly after suddenly after suddenly after suddenly. <laughs> oh God, in the name of Jesus, we forgive those that have harmed this man. We forgive the words. I don't know if his dad said bad things over him, but we forgive those words, God. I see bad words. Someone spoke bad words over you. I decree as the scripture says, no weapon formed against Meshach shall prosper. Every tongue that has risen up against him in judgment, I condemn and their consequences today. I bring them to the obedience of Christ. Yes. We usher him into goodness and mercy all the days of his life. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for your love for your daughter. The Lord says, my daughter, yes, absolutely, I love you with an everlasting love. I'll never let you go. You've let yourself go sometimes because of the lies of the enemy. But the Lord says, I want you to exchange those lies for my truth. If you know my truth through the written word, the truth will set you free day by day by day, says the Lord. Father, I break the devil's power and the lies of man, those fiery darts. I break it in the name of the blood of Jesus. The Lord says, my daughter, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Receive your forgiveness. Dust yourself off. Lift up your head. Your redemption's drawing nigh in that sense, says the Lord. It's near, but you've got to receive it by faith. And then it will come. I told my people, when these things begin to happen, lift your head up. Don't put your head down. Don't duck. Don't cringe. Don't cower. Put your head up. Well, I'm also the glory lifter up of your head, says the Lord. And when you do that by faith, says the Lord, and you praise me for my goodness and mercy, then I will cause angels to act on my behalf. And they will minister to you my presence, my power, and my promises. All the days of your life, says the Lord. In the name and by the blood of Jesus. Astrid. I didn't get that name supernaturally. It's on her chain. <laughs> Just in case you think, whoa, you know, I'm getting names here. Father, I pray for Astrid. I also see wealth on you. I see a calling as well, Astrid. God's going to use you to minister a lot in high places. I don't say this often, but I, I say this to some ladies. There's an Esther anointing on you. Supernaturally, God's going to anoint you with wealth and put you in places where God says, now you open your mouth. Now you speak. Because no one else would be able to speak to them. I've raised up Esthers and, and, and Daniels and Josephs in, in places when where no one would speak to kings and business people and politicians in our places. But I'm raising you up for that time, says the Lord. Even if it's for one person, you will speak and decree my word, says the Lord. Amen. You know, 
Yes, Jim. Oh, is there someone else here? Sorry. Okay, no more people. <laughs> I've got to share the word. Father, bless your daughter. Heal her body. I rebuke that condition that keeps threatening your life. I speak healing and health over this woman's body right now. Peace, provision, miracles of provision. I see angels coming to help and assist in that matter, says the Lord. Just commit it to the Lord. It's, 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 it's done. It's, it's done. It's fixed. It's fixed, says the Lord. Even before you call, I began to answer. I'm engineering a miracle, says the Lord. I'm engineering a sudden. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. In the name and by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. If you guys can carry on, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Looking at the time, yeah. You, you know, I was thinking of, of, of Esther, and I, and I feel to say this, this is not a boast, but somebody in my church actually pointed this out to me. That God, you've got to be content with, with, with your, your reach in the Lord. Don't stop reaching. Don't stop witnessing. Don't stop uh, speaking. Don't stop working. Don't, don't compare yourself ever with someone else. Do you know, do you know the, the, why they put blinders on horses? So that they don't see the, and get intimidated by the other horse. I wonder, Pastor Johnny, if we don't know this, maybe the horse trainers do, but maybe a horse can get intimidated by another horse. If it looks at its size, or if it looks at its snort, if the horse snorts at it, like, you know. I, I, but they put blinkers, and I just feel to say that, let God put blinkers on your life. There's someone who's watching online that there's some of you God speaking to now, and, and he's saying, receive the word for what some of these people are. You're already identifying with that. And God says, just receive that word. Receive your deliverance. Receive your healing. I want to encourage the church with a word. I, I was going to say something, but I felt, no, don't do it, because you can think I'm bragging. So I don't want to even go there. Pastor Johnny, uh, about five to three this morning, the Lord woke me up with this word. Simple word, three scriptures. Because I had a whole message prepared. And uh, I've been awake since three o'clock, just, just milling over this word funny enough and I even I think I had a dream and I'll, I'll tell you the end of the dream but the Lord said I must just encourage you as a church that you are you are going well and and if I can give a title to this message is, is keep the wheels turning that's what I saw I saw you you on a momentum as a church you you you've slotted in the wagon is going. The chariot is moving. But now listen, this word is more for you than for Pastor Johnny. Pastor Fred had a poster in his office that only afterwards I clicked what it was. It took me a long time to click. I don't know if you can remember that. He had a, a picture of horses running, but there was one horse right out in front. And if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the writing on the poster went like this, the pace of the leader is determined by the strength of the pack. So I want to say something to you today. Make them run. <laughs> they cannot do it without you. It's impossible. Imagine, and now this is funny what I'm going to say. Imagine Pastor Johnny and Pat coming now and they have to put out the chairs. And then they go to each camera and manage camera. Then I don't know how the, the, the Pastor Johnny could play. Imagine him having to play lead praise and worship. Uh, this church wouldn't grow because he'd be finished. By the time he comes to the pulpit, he'd be hanging on to the pulpit, you know. But every part has their play. All hands on deck and push, push. Keep the wheels turning. There is a momentum here already. 
You've got to keep putting in. Those of you who got saved at the production, join in. I, I saw this picture, Pastor Johnny. Now listen to this. In, you've watched the, the rugby players uh, train with that. There's a thing that they have where they scrum against. Have you seen that? Now you get one guy that tries to push it on his own. He might like inch it forward like that. Then you get another guy that comes and puts his shoulder with him, and you notice they go a bit more. I don't know if you've noticed that. Then you get another guy, the third guy, comes in. The more people they have to push against that thing, eventually it's a piece of cake. So when you push with your prayers, you push with your attendance, you push with your tithes and your offering, you push with your witnessing and soul winning, there's, there's no knowing what God can do in this ministry. And I, I feel God wants you uh, to push. And the scripture does say, press toward the upward call of the mark of God in Christ Jesus. How do you press through the local church? You press beyond your pastors. If they call a fast, fast. Deny your body. Deny whatever. Cancel all other engagements. Keep the wheels going. The wheels will only go as much as we push. And by the strength of what we push. I think there's going to be so many people when they get to heaven, we're going to be shocked to see what God wanted to do through us, but because of too much TV, too much Facebook instead of His face, too much this, too much that, too much this, too much that, and God's going to say that, this is what I, I want you to do, but I, I'm a God of covenant. I can only work through covenant, which is my word. I've got a colorful Bible here. I can only work through this covenant. I can only work when you're a doer of the word, a believer. But because you couldn't see the picture, you thought, oh, well, there's nothing worth in me. Let me not push. This person can do the pushing. That person is always, take, always taking up the offering. Let me not wor worry. Every one of you count. I don't know if you realize that. Every one of us count. Everyone. I heard a guy say this to me years ago. And he wasn't even a very, well, I think he was a committed Christian. But he made a statement. He said, God wants every believer to, and I'm going to just add to it, you know, when Paul was stranded at Malta, they, they gathered sticks. Even Paul was gathering sticks. Even Paul, as, as, as the, the ministry, we, we put our sticks in as well. And you heard just now every hand on deck. And he said, even if you're a one talent believer, throw your talent in, bring your talent. I notice with me particularly, I can't speak for anyone else, but you know, Jesus said, if you're faithful in the little, you'll be faithful in the much. Well, I'll tell you what I was going to say just now, because it goes with exactly what I just said now. <laughs> I, I would prophesy at everything that breathed when I was young. I've been prophesying for more than 50 years now, starting when I was 17. I just, just wanted to flow out of me, and I never held it back. I always wanted to give people the words that God gave me. And I would give it, yeah, I give there. Still to this day, I never prophesy for money. <laughs> Somebody, Pastor Johnny, asked me the other day, two, two ministries. One is in New York and one's there. So how much do you charge? I said, I'm not like the other preachers. I said, I'll come. If you can just take care of my accommodation, my transport, and my chow, <laughs> I'll come. The rest is up to you. I've never put a demand. And I was, I've been prophesying here, then, everywhere. And I, I feel I'm talking to some people here. And I always get intimidated, to be honest with you, when I see these other prophets that have got thousands of followers on Facebook and how they're flowing and how the wealth is flowing in their lives and how well-known they are. And, and there's thousands, and, and then this is what a, a, a guy in my church, he's a scientist, so maybe he, he was
was sharp to think of that. He said, prophet, calls me prophet. He says, I want you to know something. He says, you're actually the prophet of South Africa. So I said, what do you mean? He says, when you go to the Old Testament, oh God. He says, the, the, uh, the prophets would anoint the kings and the priests and the priests would work the law. And twice in a row now, and maybe God will give me a hat trick on this one. <laughs> but twice in a row, funny enough, I've prophesied the future chief justices of South Africa. Mocheng, Mocheng, and Ray Zondo. And, uh, and Ray's was different. We were at Johannesburg the last day of Mocheng's office, and Ray was there, and people had been trying to get me to prophesy him for five years now. Fused. Cut a long story short, they asked me to pray for him, and I thought, oh God, I don't have a word for this man. I don't know if he's going to be Chief Justice. And as I laid hands on him, God gave me a word that he would be. I, in fact, I, he, he, I said, I set you in as Chief Justice of South Africa. Then I told him how it would happen in detail. And it came to pass exactly like that. And the Lord just encouraged me this week. The Lord said, Richard, you, 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 you haven't affected thousands of people. You've actually affected 50 million people. I'll give you, a, and I'll show you why. Now, I don't walk around with a proud head on this, but I'm in shock. Just this week, the Lord said, you, you've affected this whole country because the chief justices are the ones who make the laws that the president has to keep. <laughs> He's higher than the president. So you need to pray for Ray Zonda right now. I just need to say he's, he's under attack. He's under attack. He's got death threats on his life right now because of the Truth Commission and he's exposed some things and the, the, the demons are not happy with him because devils want to take this country down. But God's put two men in a row you might not know this, but Ray Zondo is a born-again Christian, tongue-speaking uh, person as well. Baptized in water. A lot of people don't know that. This is Ray Zondo. Let me just keep encouraging you, because you never know what God's going to do with you, in you, and, or through you. If you just be faithful. God is a God of promotion. He'll promote you financially. He'll promote you with a further reach. He'll promote your voice. I have never been, Pastor Johnny, so busy in all my life. God has suddenly elevated my wife and I to an apostolic level. I don't, don't want to call myself an apostle, but we've got eight churches under us all of a sudden. Of that eight, I think five or six we started. And, and, and we ministry into them. And my wife keeps giving me work through the Lord. <laughs> we started the online program because God spoke to my wife. We started the, the prophetic school because of my wife. And now we're starting a mentoring thing online, Lord. And I say, Dad, Lord, help me. I've got enough work, you know. And uh, so, but you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad. In the Johnny, I'm literally fulfilling that saying, I'm not retiring, I'm refiring. I'm actually living that same right now in my life. I should be on retirement, but I've never been so busy. And you know what? You might not think it. I'm 68 years old, but I'm operating like a 40-year-old. I'm even playing sport with my boys. I play soccer and paddle. It's a new sport now, paddle. My boys are roping me into paddle. You know what? They're keeping me young. They're keeping me fit. They're keeping me healthy. Oh, Lord Jesus. Ezekiel 10. This is a church. Let me say this. This is a church of many wheels and cogs. Every one of you is a wheel. Do you know that? Every one of you turn. Don't put brakes on when God says, let the brake go. Don't put the brakes on when God says, accelerate. The, the Lord says, press. The Lord says, push. There's a lot of those words, press, push, put on. 
It's interesting, all the peace. It's biblical. Because God's got more for this ministry. I want to just say this, and I'll explain it in a, about a minute. There are some of you here that need to sow for your sakes into this ministry what I call an Isaac offering. Sacrificial giving. I heard that when you were taking up the offering, Pastor Johnny, I felt some of you need to give what I call an Isaac offering because God wants to bless you and miraculously bring you to a place financially where that spirit of poverty is broken once and for all. And I heard Kenneth Copeland say this once, if you don't have anything to give, sell it and bring the money. Give something. I've done it a few times. I haven't got time to tell you where God's challenged me and he's, 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 he's almost forced me for my sake. And every time God has moved upon me to give a, an Isaac offering, and the last big one was a, was oh, a good few years ago. My wife and I were given 300,000 rand cash. And we started making plans what we're going to do with that money. <laughs> and then the Lord said, tapped us on the shoulder. We sowed that old seed. That was seed for sowing. Can I tell you the blessings? We, we, you might not understand this, but I'll say it. From those Isaac offerings that I've sown, I'm living in a house I can't afford in the natural. I'm driving a car I can't afford. I'm wearing clothes that I can't afford. I'm eating food that in the natural I can't afford. I don't know if you can catch that. God is supernaturally providing abundant life for me and my family. My granddaughter, she's just turned seven. I'm seeing the fulfillment of that scripture. A righteous man lays up an inheritance for his grandchildren. She is so blessed. And I'm seeing this. Listen, parents, when you're faithful to God, God will pay you back sometimes in your children. Your children will be super blessed, even if they're naughty. I've seen that. Even if they're naughty, God will bless them. He'll reward you by keeping your children. And going even to your grandchildren. So just as a confirmation, what's happening here, Ezekiel 10 verse 14, I'm reading from the net translation. It says, each of the cherubim had four faces. The first was the face of the cherub, the second that of a man, the third that of a lion, the fourth that of the, of the eagle. That's the four gospels. That's Jesus, a, a resemblance of Jesus. By the way, it's the 14th day today. The date is the 14th. It's a very special number, Pastor Johnny. It was also the number where they had to do the Passover. And uh, April is the beginning, if I'm not mistaken, of, well, it, it was the first of years. I know September, they have a thing here, but I just feel to say that 14th, it's the 14th today. 14 is 2 times 7. 7 means perfection. 7 means fruition. 7 means God's divine order. And I believe it's prophetic that I'm here saying what I'm saying today to encourage each one of you. Do you know that you are sitting here today and if I can say it this way, whatever is happening here, there's a ton of fire on each one of you. I'm not saying it literally. I'm saying whatever words and the anointing that's coming here is on every one of you today. Go and take this word. Go and take this anointing. When, when Pastor Johnny and, him and the, the praise and worship minister, don't, don't just get stuck in. Receive the, the, the God's presence. So that's what it is here. And then also keep the wheel, the four wheels of this vision turning. The, the, the four wheels. And you'll see, I'll give you a scripture now. All in Ezekiel which is reap, you know, reach, activate, uh, no, re you know, reach, establish, activate, and plant. It's four. It's interesting. So there's four wheels that you have to keep turning. Keep the reach wheel turning. Keep the established wheel turning. Keep the activating turn 
wheel turning. Keep the planting wheel turning. Watch this now. That's the Gospels. Gospels are four. Keep the momentum and God's adding labors for his harvest. Ezekiel 10 verse 9. As I watched, I noticed four wheels by the cherubim. You've got angelic help here. One wheel beside each cherub. And the wheels gleamed like jasper. It's interesting how Pastor Johnny spoke about the anointing this morning and the glory. That's the color of the throne of God, if I'm not mistaken. Emerald and jasper. That's the picture of the glory. In fact, Jesus already said, he might not know this, but Jesus has already said, you, you and I have this glory in us already. Because he said it. He said, the glory that I have, I've given to them. But sometimes we have to manifest that glory. You manifest it through your tithes and offering. You manifest it through your prayers. See, it's also practical. You manifest it through witnessing and soul winning. You manifest God's glory through praise and worship. You manifest God's glory through prayer and fasting. You manifest God's glory through Bible reading and speaking the word. You manifest God's glory by everyone. I believe this, Pastor Johnny. I believe every one of you should do one physical thing for the local church. Pastor Johnny, I don't know if you do this, so I hope I'm not stepping on toes here. Pastor Johnny and them should not have to pay cleaners to clean this church. It's your church. You, you need to take a broom and you need to take a vacuum cleaner in hand. Hey, listen, our church does it because I believe everyone has to do one physical thing for the local church. You know why I say that? That's one of the ways God blessed me. From the age of 17, I got involved in the local church and I did physical things. I vacuumed, I set chairs, I did the windows. And you know what? When you, when you seek God's kingdom in his house, he'll bless you. He'll bless your house. I've proved it. Listen, I'm living proof of it for all these years. I'm not trying to change if they are... You are paying cleaners, but hey, imagine how much money you could save. If, Pastor Johnny, can I ask you a question? Are you paying cleaners to clean the building? Gosh. Can I ask you how much if you don't mind me asking? Sorry? Is there one person? But are you paying them? Okay, I better not fight. <laughs> you know what, my, what God has been showing me as a prophet, and I preached it. I think I preached it here as well. God wants us to put more money into evangelism than anything else we do. You heard Pastor Johnny, 147. I didn't count how many people we got saved, but we did a production and also cost us thousands. And I, was, I even said to Deb, Deb, why are you spending so much money? Like, like the, the, the church money just went, Shoo. and I thought, Lord, help me, Jesus. You know, what we should be paying for that is going on that. Then I realized, hey, you better practice what you preach, brother. Prophetic evangelism. There shouldn't be a budget on evangelism. Can you imagine if Pastor Johnny, I've always thought of this, I uh, need to come in for landing, I've got one minute. Can you imagine what we as a church could do if we had, were given a billion rand? My first thought was evangelism, but I haven't been given a billion rand. So you know what I've got to do? I've got to take, and you have got to take whatever it takes, freely you receive, freely give. The main thing in evangelism, then we disciple, then we do the rest. You can't put a price on our life. Let me just give you one more scripture. Ezekiel 10 verse 17. When the cherubim stood still, the wheels stood still. When you stop pushing, the vision comes to a standstill. I think Pastor Johnny said something earlier on when he was taking up the offering. Well, Pastor Fred always used to say this. He used to tell this to me. He said, Richard, you can have vision to save the whole world, but without any money, you won't even get out your front door. 
<laughs> Pastor Faith used to teach us that. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19 says, money answers all things, but hands too. Come here. If you, if you can't, man, if you're battling financially, come and work here. Come on a Saturday and make sure this place is whatever. Put your, put your hand to the plow here. Yeah. Watch God bless you. And when they rose up, the wheels rose up with them. For the spirit of the living beings was in the wheels. The spirit of this church is in you. From through Pastor Johnny and Pat. Are you receiving this spirit, by the way? How do you know you've received their spirit? You obey their desires, their commands, their instructions. Then you know you've got their spirit. <laughs> now I saw something interesting. I saw in a dream each saint, you know, like these richer boys. You know these riches? But I saw this vehicle, if I could come out here. I saw a vehicle. I don't know what was there, but it was like a transparent boat that went about, about this far. And the saints were on here. Yeah, each one had their own vehicle. And the vehicle was very flexible. It could go like this. But they were pedaling. But, it, but you were, the, when you pedaled, it was easy. You, were just, you guys were just flowing like that. And I, I've tried to ask God, what does that mean? I just simply think it means this. Put your hand to the plow. It's your plow. Whatever, whatever you know to do. I heard this from a preacher once and I'll close with this. If you want to know what the will of God is for your life, do what you can do with what you have now. And God will increase it. Pastor Johnny, let me hand over to you. Thank you. I trust you've received something. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You know, tonight's going to be a very mighty night. So I want you to come prepared. We were, I was in a prayer meeting, minister's fellowship, and uh, Prophet Richard Gray was there, and uh, we were all praying. And we're going to be calling the seven-day prayer and fast very soon. We're going to fast for the nation. We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to believe God that there's going to be a miracle in this nation. Somebody say South Africa belongs to Jesus. Amen. It's not going to go the way of politicians. not going to go the way they had planned. It's going to go God's way. And so we're going to do that together. But as we were praying, different ministers came up and they were all praying. And uh, we just started believing God together for our nation. That God would raise up uh, righteous leaders, etc. And place the right, right people in place. And as we were praying, the Lord said to me that the church are the kingmakers. It's the prophetic anointing. And uh, we need to, as a church, become very focused and not just pray, Lord, just raise somebody up. We must decide who. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And uh, we, we, need to, we need to actually set that person the same, same way as, you know, when David was going to become king, Absalom was doing his thing and others were doing and they had different people stand up and say, he's the king and they set him up politically and all that. But when the prophet spoke, the moment that he stood up to speak, when he prophesied, the king was set and there was a shout and everything of the world fell down. Amen. And so we prayed and I didn't want to press too much on that because, you know, you're amongst men of God and everybody's praying in a certain direction. But then afterwards, I went to go see Prophet Richard. I said, Prophet Richard, God said to me that we must put the king in place. We must set that, that authority. And um, so tonight I'm going to press into that a little bit more, and I'll tell you who God showed us. And uh, so as I was speaking to him, he got excited, said, well, that's what God showed him. And uh, come on, I believe that prophetically we can completely shift this nation on a new course, amen, and uh, set the order. And uh, I don't know about you, but I was, I was very, very encouraged. And the prophet said, well, the, the pace of the leading horse is set by the pack. Amen. Everybody pushing together. And that's what's happening in this church. You know, everybody's engaged. Everybody's pushing. Everybody's pressing in. 
And I believe that God's given us that authority to do that. Amen. So it's going to be a great night tonight, 5 p.m. Come and be with us tonight. But uh, right now, I know that the Spirit of God has spoken to you. He's moved on you. I see the Spirit of God elevating you, opening new doors in front of you. Amen. Setting each one on a path and where the Holy Ghost leads. You see, when, 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 when you're born again, you don't have to be clever. You don't have to have t 17 degrees. You don't have to know all the principles and all the, all the things. How many of you have heard uh, sermons on seven principles, 12 steps and all that? Can you tell them to me today? Please, can you? No. You see, but what we do have is the leading of the Holy Ghost. And when the Spirit of God opens a door and you step into that, He is at work. Hallelujah. And I decree today that the Spirit of God, I declare it under the anointing, that the Spirit of God is at work in you to open doors before you, to lead you. And what God has planned for you shall come to pass. Amen. And what God has set for you, you will effect. Hallelujah. And it's a spiritual effect. You know, we, we can all be billionaires and mean nothing to South Africa. Hello? We, yeah, we need money and all that, but we can be ministers of the Spirit. And that's where the authority lies. Hallelujah. So I bless each and every one of you. Father, I thank you for your church. I thank you for your saints. I thank you, Father, for the divine order that you have set, for the people that you have called together, for those you have placed divinely, for your anointing on each and every one. I thank you now, by your Spirit, you cause each one to step into that authority, to stand in the place that you have given. We thank you that in this house, Father, each and every one will stand in their place. The house will become effective. Your church will become powerful. Father, the enemy will be cast down and the, your kingdom will be set in the city of Durban through your church. And I bless every saint in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to call on Brother Kevin to come. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So the prophet has come today. Amen. And he's telling us to continue in this momentum. And this momentum is to save souls. Amen. And today as we seated, you know, many of us are in a different place in our life, a different season. Some of us are lost. Some of us are struggling with the concept of there's a savior. And when we call upon his name, our lives will change. And I can stand here today and I can say, I'm a man without sin, but I'll be lying. I can stand here and say, I'm a man without challenges, and I'll be lying. But today, as we sit here, you know, the devil, he's a cunning devil. He's here to rob, steal, kill, destroy. He's here to damage your life. That's his only purpose, is to draw you away from God. And sometimes he allows us to be tempted in this way by sin and sin, and we don't recognize the things we do. And that was his purpose right from the beginning, is to separate us from God. But the Father, his love is so great that he said, I'll make a way. I'll make a way. You see, we cannot go into the presence of God because of sin. We cannot be united with him. We cannot walk with him. We cannot talk with him because of sin. But when we call upon the name of Jesus, the blood that he shed on that cross cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You see, you cannot survive this world without calling upon the name of Jesus. The devil will take each and everything away from you. He'll bring you down to nothing. But our Jesus... When you call upon his name, he stands there and rebukes that devourer. He stands there and rebukes that sin, washes that sin, makes you righteous. Amen. In fact, he calls you the Holy One. Today, I want to speak to those of you who feel ashamed. Those of you who feel like, you know, I am nothing. You know, I'm just sitting here, I feel nothing. I feel 
like, you know, I'm a sinful person. I feel there's no life for me. But today I want to tell you, you're precious in the sight of God. You are priceless. You are a priceless soul. And today, if you have not called upon the name of Jesus, if you have not felt the warmth and the love of Jesus, if you have not felt that, that, that cleansing power of the blood, if you have not felt the healing, if not felt the, the spirit of poverty be lifted off you because you've not called upon the name of Jesus, if you've not spell, felt your spirit being at peace, I want to give you this opportunity this morning to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. You see, without Him, we cannot have a relationship with the Father. It is through Him and through His blood that we can call upon Him and be saved. Quickly, by the show of hands, those of you who want to call upon the name of Jesus today, those of you who want to make sure that if anything happened to you today, if you were to walk out this door, and something had to happen, an accident, or you had to get sick. You want to make sure that if I died today, because of my sin, I would not be separated from God. But because I called upon the name of Jesus, if I closed my eyes today, I would be taken up to heaven. Amen. I want to give you that opportunity. And those of you who've known the Lord, you know, you've been walking, you've, you know the word, you've, You've been to church so many times. In fact, you've been to a, to a point where you served in the church. But your heart's gone cold. You're confused. And the devil does this. He brings confusion. He makes you tired in life. He makes the burdens of the world weigh you down. So that your heart starts to get cold and you start to walk away. And you think the world is the only way. But when you walk with Christ... You understand that you are a spiritual being. You understand that this body is temporary, but there's an eternity that we all have to call for. Today, I want to give you that opportunity. If you want to have an eternity with Christ and an eternity with the Father, there's no other place. There's only two places. There's heaven and there's a hell. You've got to choose today, amen. And if you call upon the name of Jesus... The word of God says he's true and faithful and you will be saved. Quickly, with a show of hands. Those of you, amen, who have their hands up, I'd like to invite you as I pray to come to the front. Amen. I cannot see from here because the lights are bright. But just keep your hands raised. Father, we thank you, Lord, today, Father. For these souls, Father, Lord, are precious in your eyes. For these souls, Father, Lord, are those that you love, Father. For these souls, Father, are those that, Father, you have called, Father, Lord, and by divine appointment today, Father, Lord, you have called them. I thank you right now, Father. I rebuke every work of the devourer. Right now, Father, I sanctify this environment, and I command your angels to, Father, Lord, stand guard, Father, Lord, as they would give their hearts, Father, Lord, and, Father, there be no confusion, Father, God. But, Father, they'll be drawn to you and drawn to your spirit. I thank you right now for their lives. I thank you for that decision. For it is a heavenly decision today, Father. I bless them, Father Lord. For those even in their hearts, Father Lord, who call upon you, Father. Right now, Father, I bring that to pass, Father Lord. And I thank you, Lord. Their decision, Father, is made. Amen. Quickly, I want to invite those of you who put their hands up. Hallelujah. Amen. Come to the front. I'm giving you a few more seconds. Okay, Amen. I take it everyone is saved. Everyone is happy. Everyone's blessed. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Say to your neighbor, you got to bring someone who's unsaved. Amen. Hallelujah. See, this evening, God bless you as you go. And I pray God's blessing upon you. Amen. Uh, and I got one more thing to say. Sunday was good, but Monday is going to be better. Amen. So hallelujah.